Hello family, I hope anyone who likes my videos to support me with subscribe to my channel please give me the energy to make more effort into videos. And let's start our movie recap. Our movie starts in 1945, Poland. It is the period right following the Nazis' capitulation. A Polish sister named Teresa silently leaves her convent following a dust storm under the authority of the Soviet Union in order to find a non-Polish and non-Russian doctor while eluding the Soviet forces patrolling the streets. She meets several street orphans who lead her to a young female French student doctor called Mathilde Beaulieu who works for the French Red. Teresa is directed to the Polish Red Cross by Mathilde. Nevertheless, Teresa ultimately persuades Mir to help since she is reluctant to ask for assistance from the Polish Red Cross for whatever reason. Then, Teresa slips the doctor inside the convent while escorting her. It turns out that there is a pregnant woman in the convent who is in excruciating pain. The mother superior of the convent tells Mathilde Beaulieu that the pregnant woman was abandoned by her family and was taken in out of charity. Sister Maria, who is familiar with the French mentality, determines that the woman's baby is breached and must be delivered via operation. The mother, who was in excruciating pain, insisted on summoning a priest to assist her, but the sisters gagged her with tape and performed an emergency C-section to deliver the baby. Maria then escorted the doctor out of the convent, and Mathilda told her sister that she would be back with antibiotics. Since the doctor can't be seen coming and departing from the convent, Maria first insists on utilizing the herbalist employed by the nuns. Mathilda finally persuades Maria to allow her to return because of the procedure, though, when Mathilda arrives late for her shift, her senior doctor immediately assumes that she was awake the entire time. Samuel offers Mathilda a day off after she claims to have suffered sleeplessness. While everything is going on, the mother's superior reprimands Sister Teresa for bringing a doctor inside the convent without her consent. Mother Superior exiles her for a week after learning that another pregnant lady in the convent miscarried due to a lack of medical treatment. That evening, Maria slips Hildy into the convent to administer a penicillin shot to the new mother. The infant was then requested to be seen by Mathilda, but Maria informs him that Anna has already adopted the child. Mathilda comes across another pregnant nun called Anna who is passing out on the way out, and she is obliged to identify herself to aid Anna. The ruckus catches the notice of Mother Superior, who summons Mathilda to her office. Finally, Mother Superior recounts that the pregnant nuns were attacked by Nazi and Soviet forces. There are six other pregnant nuns in the convent who are scared to seek medical treatment because they don't want to violate their vow of chastity. Mathilda, on the other hand, can't understand why the nuns are so determined about refusing medical aid, considering she was raised by an atheist community of parents. She suggests contacting the Polish Red Cross, but the Mother Superior declines. Mother Superior ultimately agrees to allow Modal to aid the pregnant sisters on the condition that she keep it a secret from her colleagues that evening, as she fears that the news of the pregnant nuns would result in the convent being closed down after much back and forth. Samuel, from an upper-class French Jewish family, and his parents died at the Nazi concentration camp Virgin Belson. Samuel was an only child who survived because he fled to London in 1940. Samuel declares that he will never set foot in France. After dancing and drinking their hearts out, he changed the subject and asked Mathilda for a dance. After the fun, the two return to meet at Lee's place to have intercourse, and Mathilda worries aloud about how the communist state will handle the Polish church. Samuel is surprised by Mathilda's interest in the fate of the Polish church, and he hopes for nothing but the worst for the Polish church and in pools for what they did to the Polish jurors. The convent's father died many months ago, and the diocese has been unable to locate someone to replace him. As a result, the mother's superior has already postponed the vow ceremony twice, and she can't afford to push it any further, so she has chosen to hold it two months from now. Mother Superior also tells the sisters to allow Maria to assist them. Some of the nuns obey, while others are hesitant to be checked intimately by the doctor, feeling it will violate their chastity vow. One of the nuns admits to the Mother Superior that the experiences have disturbed her faith. She is urged to be strong and join in the praise by her superior mother. One day after leaving the convent for home, the car of Mathilda is halted by a squad of inebriated Russian troops. They try to force themselves on her after dragging her from the car, but the military commander steps in and sends Maria disheveled and distraught Mathilda chooses to seek sanctuary at the convent after Mathilda turns her attention back toward it. The next morning, as Russian soldiers crash into the monastery under the impression that the nuns are hiding an enemy soldier, she sobs herself to sleep while convincing herself that she is there to cope with an emergency ties epidemic. The threat of troops leaves the mother's superior very worried and expresses gratitude to the doctor for coming. After the mother's superior departs, Mathilda learns while speaking with her that she was also raped. 
Sister Maria confides in the physician that she is often reminded of the traumatic incidents from her life. She continues by saying that after being saved by Mathilda, having faith has gotten increasingly difficult for her. The views of other nuns are likewise changing, and they've grown to value her more. When Mathilda returns to her office, her supervisor chastises her for being gone without Lee. According to him, a military is a place of order and discipline. Samuel becomes concerned about her absenteeism and suspects that she is covertly attending Communist Party meetings that night in order to gain attention until she takes her bike to the convent, where another novice nun called Ludwika gives birth unexpectedly. This nun doesn't appear to be aware that she was pregnant or that she had given birth. Mathilda demands that she not be contacted right away despite the mother's superior's orders to do so since she wants to concentrate on caring for the infant. Sophia, who was responsible for the child's upbringing while getting ready to depart, met Maria, a different nun sister, for the time being. Faith is 24 hours of doubt and one minute of hope. The novice responds whether she ever regrets her life as a nun. Mir finds out that a portion of her army medical unit will be moved to Berlin when she gets back to it. The other half, however, has returned to France. Samuel is disappointed that he will have to say goodbye to Mathilda at the end of the month even though he knows she will return. Samuel will ask her what's upsetting her, which will make her even more unhappy. But at the convent, she won't say anything. A number of nuns are ready to give birth, and Maria calls Mathilda right away. Mathilda eventually tells Samuel the truth and begs him to accompany her to the convent while assuring the sisters that he will keep their secret. After assessing the expectant nuns, the infant was named Helena, and her presence was kept hidden from the mother's superior. Maria intends to visit Sophia's family with baby Helen. However, the baby is discovered by the mother's superior, who is unhappy because she was lied to. Bibiana informs Maria that she has been corrupted by the French lady who has brought controversy and turmoil to the convent. Maria responds, Forgive me, but please put controversy in chaos. We have arrived. As Sophia approached the infant and saw the mother superior carrying the child outside the convent to place her for adoption, she bursts into tears. Mother superior actually abandons the babies in front of a crucifix on a country walking path after baptizing them, contrary to what she has been telling everyone. The mother superior later prays in private that she has the courage to continue on the path she has chosen as Samuel and met Tilty deliver the babies. Sophia, who is upset, jumps to her death from a higher ledge and passes away soon after her injured corpse is found. Mathilda is troubled by what happened. After her sister Sophia has been laid to rest, she returns to her base with Samuel, who consoles her. To inform Sophia's relatives of her passing, Maria ghosted them. She informs them of her passing but also finds out that Sophia's aunt did not know Sophia when she was a youngster or that she had been taking care of another infant. Maria chooses not to share the truth. Nevertheless, this is the first time Maria has realized that her mother's boss has lied about what will happen to them. She confronts the mother superior when she gets back to the convent and demands the truth. According to Mother Superior, she handed the infant to God. When Maria expresses her dissatisfaction, her superior responds, Don't you believe in providence? Later, three more nuns go into labor and give birth to kids. Meanwhile, Mathilda and her medical team were preparing to depart for their new location. Sister Maria transports the babies to the base to safeguard them from other superiors. At the bottom, one of the sisters decides to leave the monastery and raise her own child. Maria is thanked for her assistance in parting ways with her. Meanwhile, the orphan children are also sad that Mathilda is going with her base because they have been assisting people at the base from time to time in exchange for money and food. Mathilda suddenly has the idea that the nuns may start parenting many of these kids and form an orphanage, so avoiding inquiries regarding the origins of the newborns. The infants and orphan kids were brought back to the monastery by Maria and Mathilda. They explain the concept to the mother and the nun's superior mother. Because of her own deceit, she is unable to reject the concept, and she is compelled to give her consent. Mathilda then departs for her home, picking up a nun who had also made the decision to leave the convent but have her child raised by the nuns along the way. Two months have gone by, and the children have made the convent happy and vibrant. Finally, the day of the vow ceremony has come, and the movie finishes. Leave us a comment on how you found this movie recap. See you in the next movie recap.